just don't go over the ledge. Everybody comes here to do something radical, to innovate and to completely shock people on the outside with the stuff we're trying to develop here. Ready? Yeah, we tend to be the, the wild shot. This spiky shape here, which sort of evokes the fiery character of chili pepper. So one has an idea that might or might not be good, and the way to find that out is like, just to go build it. If I really slam it, you get a much higher number. We're a bunch of inventors and, and, and realizers and doers. And I'll hand you the shovel. That was good. So in many cases, you'll go through the laboratories and you'll see some things that really have an unfinished look to them. And that's because if you come back in two weeks, they'll be different. We are funded by industry primarily, but all of the sponsors actually join this Media Lab consortium of many different companies from all different sectors. A consortium member like Huawei joins the lab not to fund a particular project, but to buy a share in everything. We've actually been developing um, a new light bulb. This is a regular light bulb, this is ours. Companies generally love to see that because they get it too. They'll see what we're showing them and they'll go back to their company and try to figure out what is it going to mean for their business. Uh, so Huawei is interested in educational technology. Huawei is interested in future ways in which people will communicate with one another. And we certainly have projects in all of those areas, but our projects don't necessarily fit neatly into anybody's future planning. What we have is pupil headsets. We can do some interesting things, like every time you stare at something more than a few seconds, we can take a snapshot of that. They all have access to whatever work sort of happens at the lab. But at the same time, they can't really dictate what it is we work on. And I think that that freedom is really incredibly important for the lab. This is a fully interactive uh, music controller surface uh, based on conductive inkjet printing technology. Now that we can print any kind of a electronic surface that we want, we can make something beautiful become a digital controller. So it has a link to Jimmy Kimmel Live and okay. the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. This is an exciting time for technology that's approaching very, very long-time human-centered questions. And I think that's a great time for the media laboratory because it means we can prototype these things we've been dreaming of. I think it's a great time for many of our corporate members because some of these magical things are actually manufacturable and society is actually ready to purchase them. So yes, I'm very excited about that. Let's look at some toys. The Media Lab is uh, probably the most vibrant environment I've ever been in. So we have physicists here, we have biologists here, we have fashion designers here, we have... Composers here, psychologists, economists, filmmakers, everything. But everybody here likes to look outside of their comfort zone little bit. Okay, so you're a composer, but you do technology. Uh, you uh, do live field photography, but you're also interested in sensors. It's sometimes I compare it to a giant playground <laughs> where we have all the latest toys, really. Maybe when you were a child, you had this notion that if you dug deep enough, you could dig all the way to the other side of the world. We all engage in sort of visions that we have for how life could be completely different. <laughs> Uh, and indeed, there's a kid on the other side of the world digging up toward us. <laughs> it's unexpected and yet makes sense to a child. There's a bit of magic. Uh, it's taking the notion of connectedness and exploring a different instantiation of connecting one place to another place. We're looking at how humans connect to this electronic nervous system that covers the planet. I'm actually very excited that we are finally starting to see really more innovative thinking related to how we interact with information and how we use computers. We initially started to explore this domain of wearable cameras as assistive device for blind people. The idea was to allow them to do things they normally cannot do when they go outside their house, uh, say for a store, and they usually have to get a lot of assistance from someone who is uh, visually capable. Cheese and crackers. 
we're again addressing the unknown in a way. What's the future? Let's try to make it. Let's try to build it. It's just a very exciting challenge and the opportunity to really think freely and, and actually try to build something. We're all, uh, to some extent, idealists who um, want to change the world for the better, and we believe that technology can improve people's lives. If the technology is getting good enough that we can do things that people have been dreaming of for thousands of years, 